Okay, welcome back to the class uh, 154 physics 2. So today it's uh will be the last video on the um, special theory of uh, relativities. Okay. So last times uh, we stop at the space times, okay, that we understand uh, the relation between um, two events, okay? So one um, happened and another one happened after that. And we see the conditions that, um, which condition that we can say that the event two uh, is the future. So let's say happen after the event one. So, okay. It doesn't need to be because of the event one, but it just something happened after that. Okay. Um, so in that time, we introduce the, um, the coordinates, okay, with the X and the CT, okay, because, um, before that, like classical mechanics, we don't put time in the coordinate because time is the same everywhere, in every frames, okay? So we don't need to put that. Um, however, for the um, special theory of the relativities, uh, time are difference in the, between uh, different uh, uh, frames, okay? So we need to put that um, uh, as a coordinate, okay? Okay, so um, what we're gonna do today, uh, we're gonna talk about the um, kinematics. So let's say uh, a particle, a single particle is moving, okay? So when the particle is moving, so it, of course it's, there are two events, so the event one and the event two, just that is the same particle, but it's just moving in one frames, okay? So, um, so if we compare first with the um, with the uh, Newtonian mechanics or three D um, three dimensions, okay. Um, so uh, we are talk if we're talking about the three dimensions, right? So we have the the um, the particle here, okay. So this is x and this is y okay and you have the coordinate x and y right and then you say yeah but uh it's the same as a special theory of relativity you can change the frames okay? so for example you change it here to the this frame this is the coordinate x prime and y prime so that you can also say okay this is the x prime coordinates this is y prime coordinates okay and then uh, you can write um, the relation between x prime and x okay so in this case if this is theta so this x prime is x cosine theta plus y psi theta okay y prime equal to the x psi theta minus y cosine theta so this is uh, the transformation of the coordinates. Um, but what you know is that uh, x square plus y square equal to the x prime square plus y prime square. Okay. So this is uh, the invariance under the transformation. Okay. So this is uh, what you see um, in three-dimensional. Okay, x, y, c. Of course, if you you can add c also. Okay, plus c square in this side is plus c prime square in this side. It's gonna be the same. Okay. Um, now, if we're talking about the special relativities, so how about it? Okay. So the goal is to find the invariance, okay, um, uh, in both a space and time, okay. So the goal is to find the invariance quantities um, between space and time. Okay, so this is our goal. And of course, um, 
we cannot just use a space because we, we understand now that we cannot really make an invariant of that. Okay. Um, so let's start from the, as usual, we start from the Rollins transformations. So the x prime equal to the delta x minus v t. Okay. We have y prime equal to y, c prime equal to c, t prime it's gamma t minus um, v x over c square. Okay. okay. Um, I will try to rewrite it a bit. Uh, so we can write x prime. It's uh, rolling factors, 1 minus v square over c square. Um, we write x minus v t, and then we divide it by c and uh, multiply it by c. Okay. Um, the reason we are doing this is because we try to make, um, if you're looking at this one, so x, y, and c, it's the space coordinations, right? So you can multiply it. But in our case, x is space, t is time. We cannot just simply simply uh, multiply it, right? Um, you know, it's two things, difference. One, it's called a space uh, with the unit of meters. Uh, one is time with the unit of seconds. So you cannot really combine. But what you can combine, it's basically the space and the space, or time and time. So if you want to define the space, okay, if you, if you want to multiply or multiplication in space, uh, you just change time to space. And that's easy because you know that the light is traveling with a constant speed in all frames, right? So you can um, represent the, sp the time by the, the space that light travels in time okay because you know that if if you know the the ct you can always know t okay um right so if you write this way um and then you define um v over c as a factor gamma so this is uh, what normally people use okay um so what you're gonna have is the x prime equal to the square root, uh, one over the square root my one minus beta square. And this is x minus uh, beta. And then t over c, okay? t over c we gonna divide as the x zero, okay? It's a it's a coordinate. So CT is a space coordinate. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is just uh, call it x zero. Okay. Um, and now we can say okay, uh, we have the x zero which is CT. So x prime for us is now it's C one. Uh, it's x one. Okay. Y is x two, and C is x three. Okay. So this is x2 and this is x3. Okay, prime or no prime. That's fine. Okay. And then um, for the y prime, so it's the x2 prime equal to the x2 and the x3 prime equal to the x3. Okay, so this is y and c coordinates. Okay. And then um, for the time, so you multiply, no, you don't need to multiply. If you um, try to move one C here, okay? So move the one C, multiply every, every term by C. So you're gonna have CT prime equal to the orange factor CT minus um, v over c x, right? 
So you get the x0 prime equal to the uh, square root of 1 minus beta square. C3 is x0 minus beta x1. Okay. So now you have the coordinates, the new coordinates in space, let's say, in space time. Okay. Because one is space, which is uh, x, uh, x, x1, x2, and x3, and one is the time coordinates in term of space. Okay. So now we have the same coordinates. Now we have x. So we need to make the combinations. Okay, something that can make the invariance. Okay, can make them invariance. So you can try to do uh, square and multiply. You can do try to do multiply, whatever. Okay, it can do in several way, but the way to make it invariant, it's maybe limited. Okay, um, so the way that it can make it invariant, it's in this way. Um, you can try to do um, x zero prime square minus x one prime square. Okay, if you do in this way, um, x0 prime square minus x1 prime square, so you can uh, have 1 minus beta over 2 down there. Um, x0 square minus 2 beta x0 x1 plus beta square x1 square. And then minus x1 square, so it's minus x1 square plus 2 beta x0 x1 minus beta square x0 square. Okay. Then you cancel this one. Okay. You write it um, x0 square minus x1 square, and then you get. 1, which is done from this term, and minus beta square from here. Okay, minus beta square, and then you divide it by okay, so then you can cancel this, okay? So finally, you say you get x0 square minus x1, sorry, x0 prime square, x1 prime square, equal to the x0 square plus x1 square. Okay. Then, um, yeah, now you can multiply, uh, you can add another term because it's, uh, this term, they are equal. So basically, you can say x2 prime square minus x3 prime square. Sorry, this side should be minus. Okay. Minus x2 square minus x3 square. Okay. So this is the way to make the space and time coordinate invariant. And you can ask, yeah, but can I do x1, x2, x3 in a plus and x0 as a minus? Yes, you can do that. Okay, it's the same. It just switch um, over the, 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 you can just multiply everything by minus one. Right? Okay, so it's, it's depend on people how they like to, how they like to write in which expression, in which form. Okay. So this is invariance and this is what we call the space time interval. Oops. Okay. Um, but why I write in this way? Because um, it's going to match with what we have learned before. So what we have learned before about a light cone. Um, so... Uh,
you have x and you have the ct here right um so for the um space time interval let's call it x uh, s square is larger than zero so it's positive it's mean um uh, ct is larger than x right so this is where the s square is larger than zero okay so it's a, it's going to be the same concept as before okay. and now uh, we try to define uh, let's say something that look like vector because in um, in the classical mechanic when you do the mechanics you can write the position as the vector right and then when you differentiate that one it's become the speed you do second derivative it's become the accelerations so we try to do in the same way so we try to um, define something up from the x0 x1 x2 and x3 okay so we define the um, x uh, it can be a capital x okay uh, become x0 x1 x2 and x3 okay but don't forget that x2 and x3 it's basically y and c okay so basically you say x y c and time okay so in this form this later term it's basically the vector r right it's the x y c coordinate in the in the um, in the space coordinates okay so um the new form it's uh, basically just the term and the space that come together and make it uh just one thing that look like vector in three dimensions okay and then um you can you from this form you see that x square plus y square is basically the dot product of the coordinates right you have the coordinates r dot r you're gonna get x square plus y square right so it's the same but we try to do it with this way okay so we define the dot product we define dot product okay so x dot x capital x dot capital x okay it's x zero square minus r square Um, maybe I can just, I should write, uh, uh, dot, uh, sorry. Okay. And of course, since this is invariant, so it can be x prime dot x prime. Okay. So this is the way we try to represent the space and time coordinates. Okay. So you put... Uh, the time coordinate in front and then you put the the, the vector space after that again um, you can put the, this one up front and then you can put the time at the end this is okay some people do that okay some book follow that way that's uh, expression it's the same okay because it finally it just represents something and then when you try to define the dot product it's become invariant okay if you define it in this way. Okay, great. So now we gonna use this one. Um, so to use, we consider a single particles, okay? Um, let's say, we consider a single particles, uh, so you have x and t okay the first particle is in these positions this is called event one the particle is moving so to this frame uh, sorry to this point okay um so the delta x uh, in this case is represent the distance that particle travel
and delta t represent the time it takes, right? Okay. So in this case, um, you can find the space time interval between event one and event two. Okay. So um, the space time interval, it's going to be um, C delta T square, right? Minus um, delta X square. Do you follow me? So um, you can write X zero at the event, the first event, X zero as the first, at, as the um, second event okay you do multiplications and then you try to make the um, the square so in this case it's uh, try to make it invariance okay so you use the dot products here so you finally get these terms okay I, I hope you understand um, so you can you can say like the first it start from the CT1 x1, x2, and x3, and then it stop at ct2, um, x1 at 2, x2 at 2, x3 at 2, okay? Then you find the delta, so you um, uh, minus it, minus both of them, so you use c delta t delta x1 delta x2 delta x3 okay and then with this one you can find the dot product which is going to be invariant okay so you get this one um then uh, you put the c delta t out it's one minus uh delta x square divided by c square delta t square okay finally you will get uh, c delta t right um, square 1 minus uh, delta x divided by delta t it's basically the ux right the speed over c square okay so <clears throat> you will get the delta s it's basically c delta t okay and one minus u x over c um, square and then you take the square root of it okay so now you can find the um the space time interval of the particle that travel okay so this is the first frame you are at rest here okay you you are at rest you're looking particle is traveling so another frames which is also um that you can look from this one it's that you have the observer that stay with the particles okay you have the observer stay with the particles okay so when you have the observer stay with the particles, does he know that he move? No, he doesn't, right? When you are on the frame that moving together with you, you don't really know that it move. You move or outside move. This is the class, uh, the the principle of the relativities. Okay. So when you are with the particle, you don't know that you move. So basically, um. What you have in your frame is the uh, in this frame, so at rest uh, with particles. Okay, so in the frame that you are rest with the particles, um, you can say that uh, delta x in your frame is equal to zero. Okay, and the time. It's the proper time, right? It's the time that part you, you have the clock and you see the, the, the time pass, okay? So um, you can have the 
basically the delta s on your term is c delta tau. Okay. So just to remind, uh, the delta tau is the time that particle travel. Time in um, particle frames. Okay. And this is the proper time. Okay. Great. So now we have it. Okay. Um, so we use the invariant principles. So this term and this term should be equal because it's invariant, right? Um, so what you have is um, what you should have um, yeah what you should have it's basically uh, delta tau right, equal to the delta t uh, 1 minus ux square divided by c square and half okay or you can write it in different way you can write delta t by the delta tau which is uh, 1 over 1 minus ux square divided by c square and half. Okay. And this term can be treated uh, later that you do, you do differentiation by time, by the proper time. Okay. So why we are doing this way? Because uh, if we have the time in your frame that you see the particle move, it change but if you're talking about the time in the frame of the particle it's always the same right you, you're looking from your your frame people are looking from the different frames so uh, let's imagine you have um let's say this is you okay um and you see the particle is moving okay and then maybe this is me I also see the particle is moving and I also moving. Okay, so the time in your frames and the time in my frame are different, right? But if we're talking about the time of the people in particle rest frame, it's going to be the same, right? So we're talking about this frame. Okay, the time in this frame, it's the same because it's uh, the frame that's moving with the particle and it's a proper time. Okay. So that's uh, why we try to do this. So in case you have the, you have to do something with the, uh, oops, with the time uh, differentiation, you can use this one. So you differentiate with something that you know that it doesn't change, and uh, it does what it doesn't change is a proper time doesn't change. Okay. Um. So now, uh, you can try to uh, write. Again, uh, put back the what we define. Okay, the coordinate that we define. Um, so we uh, define x. Okay, equal to the uh, c t x one, x two, and x three. Okay. So if we try to do um, the delta x by um, the delta tau okay why don't you try to do with the time because the time change in the in the different frames okay we don't want to do that we want to do something which is doesn't change and uh, what it doesn't change it's uh, the times the proper time that the the the, the time of uh, from the clock which is at rest with the particles okay uh, so you have c delta t over delta tau um, delta x1 over delta tau, delta x2 over delta tau, delta x3 over delta tau. Okay. And then, um, yeah, this is we know. Okay, from this one, we know that it's delta x by delta t and delta t by the delta tau. Right, 
right? Okay. So we have delta t by the delta tau, delta t by the delta tau from everywhere. Okay. So you can put it out. So it's uh, so it's delta t by the delta tau. And then c. And then you have v, right? Because you have the delta x by delta t. Okay. So now you can say this is the. Um, this is the delta x divided by delta tau. Okay. Um, so you can write this as a big V, okay? Something that look like velocities. So why we call it uh, why is why I say that it look like velocity because basically it's the component it's the it's something that composed between c which is speed of light and the v which is the speed of the particles from the my from from the rest frame that I'm looking the particle is moving, okay? So we have C, uh, we have the phi V, which is um, equal to the 1 over 1 minus 2x squared divided by C squared and half. Okay, and then you have C and V. Okay. Then, okay, let's try to do something more. Okay, we have something that look like space space coordinates okay something that look like vector uh, sorry uh, velocities okay which is composed with the chi of the Rollins factors um, the spe uh, the speed of the light and the speed of the particles okay so if you would like to looking for the kinematics something um, what we try to do is we try to multiply it by m okay try to multiply v by m okay so you get m v right equal to the uh, 1 over 1 minus u x square divided by c square m c and then M V. Okay. So now you have this one. And M, of course, it's uh is the mass of the particles that measure in in particle rest frame. Okay. Sometimes people call this is M0. Okay, measure in uh, particle rest frame. That's fine because it's a it's a it's only frame that we use the reference. We use the time reference there. We use the mass reference as uh, from there. Okay. Um. So, what exactly it is? Okay. You can if you would like to do m zero. This is fine. Um. So what we try to do is understand. Um. Understand the physical meaning of it of them right. Okay, so let's start. But it's maybe if you look, need to look in the first and the second term, um, we try to do the second term first because it's easy. Um, okay, just to note one thing that what I'm trying to do here is basically off from the book. Okay, the book will give you the result as I'm going to discuss. But I'm, what I'm trying to introduce here is you, you develop the concept of why we are trying to define that way. Okay, why, what we are looking for. So we try to looking um, for something that is invariant. And then uh, when it's invariant, we try to define the new coordinate systems, which are basically it's CT, which is a space that time tra can travel and the space itself. So X, Y, and C. 
Okay, and we know that we can make it invariant in some way. And then um, after that, we now starting to consider um, the particle moving because we would like to understand the kinematic of it. Okay, and um, as usual, <clears throat> um, the Uh, the um, when we say that uh, in the special relativity we we are talking when we're talking about interval we are talking about two events okay but for me now two event it's basically from one particle traveling okay and then when particle traveling you can create the, the first event and then the second event so you it take delta x and it take delta t from the observer which are at rest and looking its travel okay and then from that we say okay start from what's invariant okay and then so we try to find the space-time interval from that and then we develop the coordinates and then we say okay we start from the uh, like a space coordinate so now we go to another um another vector like thing okay so it's uh, now it's uh, we are talking about the speed okay so we try to reproduce the speed in the three dimension but now in four dimensions and then we multiply it by m just to make it kinematic because we, we know that in the kinematic we have um, the um, the momentum and the energies right and energy is the kinetic energies plus the potential energies um so we are talking about the uh the second term first okay so this is the when the book gives you um directly so you have the m um sorry i should use u here okay because i reserve v for the um the speed of uh, the speed of the frames okay so the the latter term is mu divided by 1 minus u square divided by c square okay Okay, um, so when uh, if we consider um, u over c it's less than 1, okay, if u over c is less than 1, so the Lorentz factor start to become 1, right, finally you will get mu. And of course, we know that this is momentum, right? So it's mean that the latter term, okay, mv one minus u square over c square m c m u. So these terms represent the momentum. Okay. Okay, so now we know that's uh, how to define what we call the relativistic uh, linear momentum. Okay, instead of the mu, you uh, multiply it by the Lorentz factors. Okay, um, what you can try to do is basically you can you know that the momentum is conserved, right? Um, so um, if we consider the two particles colliding, you know that. Uh, in classical way, um, it's uh, the, the the sum of the momentum gonna be zero, right? But if you're looking a different way on one frame that you you stay in at rest with the uh, with the particle in one frame, you're gonna see that this another particle is moving with a different speeds. 
Okay. Both have mass m, and then um, you try to do the momentum conservation here. Okay. And you will see that if you use the classical momentums, it will not conserve. Okay. You need to do the um, relativistic momentum. Relativistic momentum. Okay. So you try you need to use here, and then you're gonna see that it's conserved. Okay, so this is uh, what you can try to do. Okay, and then of course you can also show that uh, under the relativistic condition, the accelerations decrease under the action of the constant force. Okay, so this is one uh, example. So, no, yeah, one exercise in a survey. Okay, so you can starting from uh, to start this one. We in fact, we already started uh, in the way that we try to prove the acceleration. Okay, if you try to apply that to this one, or you can redo it from scratch. This is fine. So, okay, you can have uh, the feeling of the uh, relativistic um, linear momentum. Okay, so. Um, this example is very easy. Uh, the question is try to. It's asking that you try to compare between um, the classical momentums and the relativistic momentum. Sorry, and you right try to compare. Okay, and that you're gonna see that uh, with the with the uh, relative, relativistic momentum, it's 50% uh, larger than the classical momentum. Okay, this um, example just uh, calculates um, mu and uh, the relativistic momentum, so just uh, multiplied by the orient factors. So you're gonna see that it's uh, different. And before you multiply, you can see that this is different. It, it will be different anyway because of the Rollins factors, the, the, pres the presence of the Rollins factor here. And you know that the, the, the Rollins factor is larger than 1. Okay, So it means that the relativistic momentum is always greater than the classical momentum. Okay. So now we... Uh, Next, we try to uh, move to the, uh, I, I preserve this space here in case I need to use it later, um, the relativistic energies, okay? So now we consider the first term, okay? So the first term we call uh, M0, which is M, okay? You can write M, let's try. C uh, and the, Rollins factors. Okay. So what is it, right? Uh, since we know that the later term is the momentum, so we can write it as p, right? So the first term just say that maybe it's something related to mo to momentum. We can write it as the p zero. Just write it, uh, just define it as a P0, okay? Just define um, the first term as P0, okay? So what it, what it's, uh, what the first term is exactly? So we, um, we try to, uh, 1 minus u square over c square and half, right? So if you do in the same way as the momentum, so you treat u over c, which is less than 1. So um, the, the term can equal to the mc, okay? If you treat u over c, it's much less, much less than 1 you get the first term equal to the mc and you don't know 
what it is, right? We, we have no idea about it. We never learn about it. Um, of course, you say, yeah, but it's particle that traveling with the speed of light. Maybe the momentum of the particle as a speed of light because it's mv. This is mc. Yeah, but it, what is the physical meaning of that? We, we don't have the particle that traveling with the speed of light, right? Um, so if we cannot do that, we need to um, expand the term, okay? Instead that, um, we try to expand more. So we do the linear, uh, we do the, the, the minorial expansion of this term, okay? You use the expansion one plus x over n, it's one plus nx plus uh, n, n minus one, x squared divided by two fact, right? So um, what we do is n plus, I uh, should have half here, right? Um, so you have minus half and then minus u square over c square so you have half of u square over c square and then um, you have plus and then you have half and then you have 3 over 2 right x square it's x u square divided by c square uh, square divided by two okay and then plus whatever okay. um this term it's basically three this is three over eight u square divided by sorry u fourth divided by c fourth So now you have it, okay? Something look like MC one um no I put I can put C in I put T P zero here, okay? It's M One over C. No, 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 sorry. I multiplied by C, right? So it's C plus half U square over C plus three over eight U fourth over C four C three. Okay, and so on. It's still unclear what exactly it is. Right? The first term is MC. Yeah, but this is the problem we have before. The second term is half of the U square divided by C. What is it? No idea, right? Um, it looks like the kinetic energy, but divided by C, okay? So what we do, it's basically we say, yeah, but then um, what uh, then let's multiply every term by C. So you have C P zero. Okay. Then the first term is MC square. The second term, it's going to be half of M U square. Third term going to be um, 3 over a, m u fourth um, divided by c square and so on. Okay. Now you familiar that, yeah, this is the kinetic energy, right? This is the, kinet the classical kinetic energy. Then you have that feeling that this term, it should be an energy. 
right? Because you cannot just sum energy with something else. I mean, it needs to be the same quantities so that, so that you can sum up. So this is the term of the energies, okay? And then this something that have it, the particle have it, even it doesn't move, okay? So it's basically, it's the rest energy. Okay, particle doesn't need to have, a uh, particle doesn't need to move. It still have that energies, okay? Um, the overall term, uh, or the term after this, it's depend on the speed of the velocity, uh, the speed of the particles. So, overall, we call it the kinetic energy. This is the relativistic kinetic energies, okay? Um, the, the latter term, 3 over 8 and so on and so forth, they don't show it in the classical way because in a classical uh, mechanic, you always see it's less than 1. So that this, all of these terms are cancelled in classical world. So that's why you see only the kinetic energy as the half of the m u square. Okay? And plus with the, what we call uh, the rest energies. Okay? So finally, um, at the end, we know that, um, so you need to, sorry, just to, and then you, you need to know that the first component need to multiply it by C, okay, to get the correct energy form. So you know that, finally, you know the kinetic energies, it's basically MC squared divided by the Rollins factors minus the rest energies, okay? So this is what we call uh, the energies, um, the, the, the relation between the kinetic energy, the total energy, and the rest energy. So the total energy mi uh, minus the rest energies, it's the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is the energy that um, when the particle change by the force, for example, so it's work done on the force that changing the speed of the particles. Okay. Um, yeah, so now we have this formula. Um, if we would like to expand it a bit, okay, uh, from this one, um, if we write it, um, so now, um, maybe I need to go back a bit. So from this one, okay, we can, we know that this term represents the energies. Okay, it's represented by the term and then you need to um, multiply by C, right? This is equal to the energy. So it's mean P0, it's basically E over C. This is what we put uh, back to um, the definition of the something that we define before. Okay, so now we have energy divided by the speed of light, and then we have the momentum. Okay, so this it's uh, it can represent by p, and this is the full momentum. So now um, you can understand that when we when we can write this component, you can make it invariant, right? So um, to make it invariant, so you can make the dot products p dot p, right? So for p dot p, um, if you if you are in the rest frame, looking for the particle is moving. Okay, so uh, you're gonna get e square over c square minus p square, right? But if you're looking in the different frames, so you are with the particles. If you are with the particles, 
particle is at rest all the time. Particle is at rest all the time. Right? So, um, so when the particle is at rest all the time, the momentum it's become zero, right? And um, you don't have the um, kinetic energies. Okay, the kinetic energy become zero. Okay, so you have only the rest energy. So it means you have m square and c square. Just a second. Okay, right, it's correct. Okay. Since you don't have the kinetic energy, so you have only the rest energy, which is the um, MC. Right, so you have E over C equal to the MC square divided by C equal to the MC. Okay, so when you do the dot product, you're going to have M square C square. Okay, and then you, you know that this is the invariant, right? Okay, so you can find the relation e square over c square minus p square equal to the m square c square. So you're going to have e square equal to the p square c square plus m square c fourth. Okay, so this is the relation between um, between uh, energies, momentums, and the mass. Okay. So you have these relations. E square equal to the P square C square plus M square C fourth. Okay. And then uh, if M equal to zero, if you have a particle that have a mass equal to zero. So we learn this is the what we call photon now today. So the photon have the energies equal to the momentums um, multiplied by um, the um, speed of light. Okay. So this is the, what we call the photons. And then um, you can say, yeah, but this is, is this true? And if the, if the photon have the, if the photon have the mass equal to zero, can it have the momentums? The answer is yes, it can have because the momentum is basically mu, right? Divided by one minus uh, u square over c square. Okay. So, um, Yeah, um, and photons, it's traveling with the speed of light so that you can know that uh, if this term, it's denominator, it's uh, zero, uh, sorry, nominator is zero, denominator is zero, so it's zero by zero, so it can have the momentums, okay? And the, the relation between the, the energy and the momentum of the photon is following this formula. So this is um, what you should have, okay? And um, before we move, I would like to make a summary of uh, what we discussed up to now. Um, is that for the kinematics, okay, you have two things. So you have the, uh, the relativistic uh, and, uh, linear momentum in this form, okay? At least you should know how to use it. So you have this form, this form, 
and then you have the kinetic energy in this form okay mc square divided by uh, multiplied by the Royan factors minus the rest energy mc square and then you have the relation between energy mass and momentums and in, you know that from the photon which is the mass equal to zero you can find the energy equal to the momentums multiplied by c okay um great so now you know that um and then uh, from the plot just to make sure i didn't miss it so um if you try to plot the um uh, the <laughs> the kinetic energies okay um and the speeds okay with the classical way since you don't have the limit of the speed it can go beyond this one okay it can go beyond the c but for the relativistic um we, you know that the kinetic and uh, the, the speed will not exceed than the c okay however the mo the the um the, the kinetic the kinetic energy can also be increased okay it just increasing but um it, it can increase, but the speed will not much increase, okay? Well, this is the, the way that the accelerator works. So it tries to increase the kinetic energy. It tries to increase the momentum of the particle. And we don't really need to talk about the speed of the particle uh, in the accelerator because it's very close to the speed of light, okay? So at this, at this point, it can be 0 0.9999999991, the speed of light, okay? Or it's beyond that numbers okay it's fine but the speed it's just that it's just close to the speed of light but how close it is we don't really need to talk about that we because it's uh it's it's difficult to say okay it's uh 0 0.9 50 times and then one okay very close or just 0 0.999 and then some numbers with the speed of light it's just very close um, but what we're talking about, uh, the particle in accelerator, it's the energies of the particles, okay? The, we can talk about the energies, we can talk about the uh, momentums, okay? Because that thing can increase. Okay, great. Um, so now we are talking about the another units, okay? So when uh, we are dealing with the subatomic particles, it's convenient to express the energy in the unit of the electron volt, okay? Because the particle are usually uh, give, uh, are usually get the energies by the accelerators, okay? And the accelerator, it's uh, electron volt, it's basically electrons, right? Electron is a unit of the charge. And then you try to accelerate it with the, the difference of the voltage, okay? So that's what we call the electron volt. Um, so the one electron volt, it's basically one plus six, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 1.6 uh, times 10 to the 19 joules, okay? So in this example, you uh, I let you try to um, calculate the rest energy of the electron in electron volt. So what you can do, it's uh, the rest energy is mc square, right? <clears throat> So you do 9.11 times 10 to the 31 kilograms and the speed, which is the 3 times 10 to the 8 meter uh, per second square, okay? So you get this thing as a juice and then when you divide it by 1.602 times 10 to the minus 9, Two per electron volt, you will get a number in electron volt. Okay, um, let's try to do it by yourself. You have 0 0.511. Okay, so this is m electron uh, multiplied by the c square. Okay, so then sometimes people will say, yeah, mass of electron it's basically 0 0.11. Uh, mega electron volt sorry divided by c square okay so the unit of the energy 
um, divided by c square. It's based on uh, the unit of mass. Okay, great. Um, this example I will uh, skip. You try to do it by yourself. Um, so you have the total energy of the of the proton in three times of the rest energy. Okay, so the the you have the rest energy m m proton c square, right? And then the total energy is three m proton c square. And then uh, what you what I ask you to do is basically calculate the rest energies, uh, the speed of the proton, the kinetic energies, and the and the and the proton momentums. Okay, so this is a very straightforward thing. Okay. Um, if we try to do the uh, mass, uh, uh, think about the mass as the measurement of the energies. Okay. The equation of this one, the total energy, it's the Lorentz factors, mc square. <clears throat> Okay, it's it's it say that even the particle is at rest. Okay, it still have the energies. Of course, we know that that is the rest energy, right? Okay. Then, um, if you're talking about the conservation of the mass and energies, so the mass and energies, um, the, the this conservation say that uh, if you would like to make a sum of the mass energy systems, okay, of the of particle before interactions must be equal to the sum of the mass energy of the system after the interaction. So basically it's a conservation. So something before the interactions it's equal to something at, uh, after the interactions. Okay. And this and that something is what we call the mass energies. Okay. And what we have to use is the this formula. Okay. The E equal to the Lorentz factors mc square. But now we're talking about two particles, three particles. So you need to um, substitute the, um, the, the, the E, M, and gamma uh, properly. So it's of the particles. Okay. Um, for example, maybe take the example. It's easy to understand. So you have the, uh, the two particles. It's traveling. Okay, so both have mass m and um, with the speed u, okay? And one is u, but in the opposite way. It's uh, create the total inelastic uh, cross section uh, scattering, total inelastic process. So finally, it's create another mass, okay? At rest. Yeah, because momentum is conserved, so it's uh, uh, you disappear, so the particle is at rest. Okay, so the mass energy of the particle before, okay, so we know that for before the first one they have mass, right? C square divided by one minus u square over c square, right? This is from this term, this. Uh, particles. Another one have the mc square, one minus u square over c square. Okay, and this from these particles. Okay, you get the particle mass m, the big m at rest, right? So it's mc square. They don't have the Lorentz factor because Lorentz factor equal to one is at rest, so Lorentz factor is equal to one. Okay, you cancel C. Okay, so now you see that this is Lorentz factors. This is Lorentz factors, right? It's larger than one. So the conclusion is that this Lorentz factor is larger than one. Okay, so the conclusion is that um, the M, the big M, it need to larger than two m, right? Because now it's uh, because m is equal to the 
2m divided by the Rollins factor. And this Rollins factor is larger than 1. Okay, so now we know that. So, where the mass, where the mass increasing, uh, the increasing of the mass come from? So, you find the delta m equal to the m, right, minus 2m. So, you have 2m, 1 over u square c square minus 1. Um, okay, let me put back, put the M back, sorry. And then I multiply it by C square and then I divide it by C square. Okay, so I put the C square of the denominator inside the bracket and I move the C square for the denominator outside. So you have the um, the delta m equal to the um, two over c square. Okay, the first one is m c square divided by um, the uh, square root, right? So this is the total energies, right? The first term. This is mc square divided by the square root. This is total energies. The second term is mc square, which is the energy at rest. So the difference between total energy and the energy at rest is the kinetic energies. Okay. So the difference of mass, it's coming from the kinetic energies. Okay. So the mass increase, okay, also uh, from the kinetic energies, okay. So this is how to interpret that when you make the particle collisions, you can create the high mass higher than the summation of the mass uh, the, of the particle that you try to make the collisions, okay. And the reasons that why you can create a bigger mass because you have a uh, big kinetic energies. Okay, the kinetic energies convert to the mass. Okay. And this is the keyword of the um, the particle collisions, the particle colliders. So in this example, this is the large uh, electron uh, positron collider. Large electron uh, positron collider okay the the lep okay at cern so you collide electrons okay you collide electrons and the positrons okay and you create a c boson okay and you see the mass difference electron is only 0 0.5 mev and the C it's 91 GeV. So it's at least a thousand times bigger. Okay, so how can this happen? How can you uh, create, how can you make a very big mass from a very tiny small mass? That is because it's not only the mass that create a mass, but it's also from the kinetic energies. Okay, so that's why we try to accelerate the proton. So we increase the kinetic energy, we increase the momentum to that, and build a big, um, a build and and build a, a heavy particles. Okay, so this is uh, how um, how it works today. Okay, so you you don't really need to create a big mass. Uh, you, you don't really need to create first a very big a heavy particle and make it collide to create uh, much bigger. But we can just starting from a very small particle, but 
put a lot of the energy to it try to accelerate it try to increase the momentum to that and when you make it collide uh, that can create a uh, very big particles okay so this um, and, and, and in this situation you see that it's more than 1000 times heavier than the um, the mass of the origin which is the electrons okay um so this is the way to make the colliders and the fission is the same okay so if you try to break the particles okay so looking at different point of view you have the big particle and you try to create a small one okay Um, if you're looking in this um, formula, so um, from the mass energy conservations, okay, you can you can say from this formula is that the m, which is total mass, it's larger than the m1 plus m2 plus m3, right? Because this is larger than one, this is larger than one, this is larger than one, okay? So the mass of the big particle is larger than this one. So we have the loss of the mass. We lost mass in fissions. But the loss of the mass is going to increase um, energies in motion of the particles. Okay, so the mass is convert to the kinetic energies or fissions. So it's opposite way. Right? So if you make the collisions, the kinetic energy is convert to the mass. But if you make the fusion, fission, sorry, fissions, um, the the loss of the mass creates back the energies, and that in form of the kinetic energy. So when when you when when the big particle it's uh, decay or it's uh, break break down. Uh, the small particle can travel because they, they, they have the kinetic energy coming from the loss of the mass. Okay, so this is um, when you try to looking on the on the fissions. Okay. Great. So I think um, we are done today with the end of the um, topic of the special relativities. Hope you enjoy this because it's quite new. The next one is going to be more fun about the quantum mechanics, so it's going to be very new to you. Okay, um, let's try to finish this videos, um, and then we're going to have the review to um, make sure that you understand, and also exercises a few of them, okay, to prepare you for the exam. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, this is all from these uh, lectures. Sorry that it's take. A little longer than I expect. It's uh, three videos in total, like maybe four and a half and five hours. Okay, so it's it's a big stories. Okay, thank you very much, and see you for the next video. Bye bye.